Good afternoon, everyone. Long time since the last member update. I apologize for not being in touch. It's very difficult when you're on the road. We traveled 2,500 miles. We're now on the West Coast. And I'm coming to you from a residence in by Marriott, which is really nice. Um, had a couple of issues getting connected here. Uh, the people helped me out uh, setting up a private wireless network. So everything looks good now. So it was quite the adventure. Uh, we had a truck jackknife and burn, uh, sat on the freeway for two hours. We had some very close calls in the mountains at night. Uh, it's uh, kind of followed the Oregon Trail a little bit. But uh, it, was a, it was a crazy trip. We took two cats with us. That's never easy. Uh, fortunately, we had gabapentin prescribed from the vets. And if you do have to travel with cats, that's really, really good stuff. It's kind of a nerve drug. It calms them down. And you just mix like a 100 milligram pill with their dinner. And they just sleep so but still we can only do about uh maybe 300 miles 400 miles a day was about all we could do uh part of that was we were carrying a very loaded trailer uh we ended up filling up uh we were in the process of selling our house right now we ended up filling up two dumpsters that we had in our driveway Plus, we filled up a large pod, had pods come and take that, and then we also ended up filling up a large U-Haul trailer, which we pulled behind the SUV for 2,500 miles. So it was quite the adventure. We're just trying to finalize on the sale of our house. Looks like we may have top-ticked the market in our area. Prices are starting to come down, but hopefully everything clears. There's just some last-minute details. So again sorry for being away for so long i really wasn't in a position to do any updates i could have done something from a cell phone or a tablet or something like that but to be honest it was just so exhausting pretty much all we did was get into the hotel and crash every night um, the driving is really exhausting especially when you're pulling a very very heavy trailer also it's wide uh, dealing with lots of trucks um yeah so that's why uh hopefully people didn't think that i disappeared and ran away that's not what happened it's just that selling a house and moving across the country is a process i would not wish upon my worst enemies so uh let's try to get caught up here on some of the information we've had a massive breakout in bitcoin but we're going to look at the futures first here We'll start off with the bonds. The They're bouncing. We're going to get to the close view here, the minute view. But you can see on the monthly that we have a pretty serious bear market, at least here in the two-year note. Uh, you can see that it's testing new lows. The The support is right in here at, at this line. And we're kind of testing that. But we've been at very, very low interest rates for a long time. I think what the Fed is probably doing is they're just letting it slowly drift down to see what happens. Uh, it's probably pretty likely. I've heard a lot of people say they think that we're going to overheat uh, as far as uh, inflation taking off. Now, you have to remember their definition of inflation really is the only thing they're worried about going up in price is your wages they don't care about anything else they don't care if stocks go up if the price of health care goes up if the price of heating your house or food goes up they don't care about those costs or automobiles consumer products anything else they don't care about that inflation what they care about is wage inflation and that's uh what matters uh, simply because we know they're the powers that be, so they don't want to pay. So if we get to the up close here on the two-year, you can see kind of a spike today. Uh, we were looking to break down, and it may be a reversal here. Back to that monthly, you can see a really, really strange 
uh, volume type of uh, mark here. Uh, this isn't a stochastic. What this is is commercial hedgers and large traders. So you can see a big, big divergence. Really, we've never seen this type of divergence before. Uh, the only other time we had something similar, this is where the green line is on the top. This is where the commercial hedgers are way up there. Large traders are way down there. Uh, we had a, a blip like that, 2016, and then we had a big one signal here right before the financial crisis. You can see that in 2007. And that presaged this blast off in the bond market, which, of course, was the Fed taking interest rates all the way to zero. So... What does that mean going forward? Well, it, it could mean that uh, we get some significant weakening with these rates sticking up and the Fed just does a 180 and the thing just takes off all the way back up to zero interest rates. That's quite possible. Let's look at the five-year note and see if we get a repeat of that. We do. We have a similar pattern. Not nearly as much of a price decline further out on the yield curve. Uh, Ten-year note is not showing us that sort of thing, and the 30-year bond looks fairly subdued. It does look like it could be rolling over, but that's not a certainty. It is at support. So for me, I there's no way for me to know which way interest rates are going. So let's jump over to the Bitcoin chart. You can see we had that old high around 5,000 that we hit right at the end of August and then we had a massive sell-off took us all the way down to 2700 and then we got more than a double from September to where we are we got 5920 almost 6000 and you can see I've drawn in a series of trend lines the first one being the long long-term trend which is still showing support at 1200 1254 to be exact that would be our serious long-term correction point the next trend line uh, we don't pick that up until we get all the way up to here with 3500 price being the target for a correction and neither one of those has been tested really uh, the only test was here of the second trend line and we just have we have this one here so really two touch points and tests of that second trend line. Same thing with the third one uh, coming up much sharper. And that's projecting really about a $5,000 price for the test. And then we have the steepest trend line here that we may correct back to. But a, cor a correction back to this trend line would be very shallow. It would be back to about 5800 A bounce off that trend line and then a takeoff. What would it be? I don't know. 10000 So we're still in a bull market how how far can a parabolic uh, move go well it, it goes until it's exhausted um there's a lot of people who would have looked at this one here and said that's it that's the end of the parabola we've crashed and but it only corrected to there same thing here same thing here now it does look to me that this move up to nearly six thousand is certainly not percentage wise as much as the prior moves so that tells me that this parabolic move is weaker and should be higher. It really should be up here, uh, around seven or 8,000 to continue this parabolic move. If it doesn't continue, if it, if it kind of rounds off and goes down, that's significantly bearish because that's sort of a break of the parabola. And we know with a parabola, it just has to keep going. It's sort of like our debt money system uh, it has to go up and it has to go up faster than it was going up in the past if there's any sort of pause if there's any sort of uh, failure to continue to increase in the rate of increase then that's when you get a collapse so that's what we started with in 2007 2008 with the financial crisis the fed came in and injected tremendous amounts trillions of dollars and put us back on a parabolic path uh, the stocks are still continuing that path you can see if we go to let's go to a daily and just look at these daily moves uh, the Dow yesterday was a big mover you can see 
a big daily spike in the Dow. We've got S&P 500 made new highs yesterday, a big seeming correction here. NASDAQ 100 also made new highs, crossed over 6,000. Now we've got a pretty serious red candlestick. Let's pull into the five minute and see if there's any kind of serious correction here. So it doesn't look very serious correction wise. Um, these sorts of moves look large on the nearby charts, but when you're looking at long term, uh, they're just little tiny moves. So uh, then you have the, the Nikkei. You can see that breaking into new highs. Euro stocks are getting ready to break into new highs. The DAX has already uh, broken into new highs. I don't know if those are new all-time highs. The VIX is at all-time lows. So we're just continuing the course that we've been on. Is inflation going to tick up? Well, it's certainly not indicated in the bonds yet, just maybe in the two-year. It's definitely not indicated in the metals. The only metal that even looks healthy is palladium. You can see that palladium is fighting to get above that $1,000 price. And uh, it, it's had a couple of tests. If we go into the daily, you can see that it had that big test of 1,000. Then it had a second test and got through it, and it fell back. It looks like it wants to go above 1,000. And ultimately, on palladium, the old high is 1,100 from all the way back in 2000. That was that palladium crisis. Platinum is not nearly as strong. You can see uh, palladium is higher than platinum. That's a rare occasion. Uh, copper is kind of ticking up, looking strong. That's somewhat of an indicator that the boom is going to continue. And then, of course, silver is still just weak. It's still trying to put that rolling up bottom formation in, trying to get back to that 22 price, but it's just uh, not getting there. Gold is maintaining the long-term bull market but it's just kind of going nowhere in the intermediate so let's get over to uh, the alt cryptocurrencies now one of the charts I've got up here is Florin coin uh, we're starting to see some of the alternative cryptocurrencies pick up as you know when Bitcoin takes off and this is the Bitcoin chart in USDT here on Poloniex when Bitcoin takes off, a lot of the alts take a hit. Then when Bitcoin sort of pauses, that's when you see the strong alts come in and make a move. Sometimes they move against Bitcoin, or sometimes they move with it. Uh, one of the ones that seemed to perk up after Bitcoin paused was Stellar. You can see here, pretty big move. Um, now, this is quoted in dollars or USDT, so it's going to look bigger than the stellar chart quoted in Bitcoin. So Bitcoin tends to carry the price of these up, uh, even if they're just staying even with Bitcoin. If Bitcoin's in a huge rally, then, of course, they're going to go up. So back on the uh, main alt quoted in Bitcoin, you can see Florin coin. That was one that I had a big play in, and I said... I didn't want to get back into it until it went below a thousand, preferably even down to 500. You could see we hit 1146 on on Florin coin. It's number two now in uh, percentage gain. Not a lot of volume, um, but I just wanted to show you here over on the World Coin Index that when you look at it in dollars, and you can't look at most of these cryptos, you can't look at them in dollars because the USDT only has these just uh, zero cash and uh, Bitcoin, Monero, Ripple, just the big ones, Ethereum, Dash, Litecoin. But uh, to get a price quote in dollars to see how you're doing long term, you can see here on the Florin coin chart, even though Florin coin had a tremendous bear market and uh, anybody that held it was probably, you know, just chewing their nails, you can see that in dollar terms, Florin coin is actually forming a type of uh, breakout pennant formation. So even if you were down significantly from where the price was in Bitcoin, the price of Bitcoin going up uh, has carried so many of these markets up. And Florin coin is no exception. So you can see Florin coin is actually getting ready to break out 
through this 10 cents and uh, like I said I had millions of them I'm looking to get back in but I haven't seen the price yet I should have acted because we're starting to rally so let's get back to the main page here on uh, world coin index and you can see up here market cap is 170 billion roughly now I think we hit about a high of 175 um, that was when Bitcoin was up near that 6,000 price we're trying to get through that 200 billion dollar mark remember I made the prediction of a 1 trillion dollar market cap for all cryptocurrencies I still think even at this late date we have roughly two and a half months to go in the year uh, it's quite possible if we get a resumption of that par parabolic trend. Uh, market caps, you can see Bitcoin comes in at 94 billion. Ethereum's at about 30 billion. We've got Ripple hanging in at 8 billion. Bitcoin Cash is at 5 billion. Bitcoin Cash has been very weak. It's only around $330. You have to remember you have to add that price to Bitcoin to get what you would have if you held through the split. And that puts us over $6,000 Bitcoin if you add those two together. Litecoin's got a $3 billion market cap. Hasn't really performed. Dash is sitting there at $2 billion. And NEM, NEO, Monero, etc. Um, one of the new ones, uh, Omicigo, uh and some of the others are over a billion. So quite a few strong cryptos here. Zcash, which had a significant move uh, right after the kind of crisis with Bitcoin uh, had a major correction and really hasn't recovered since uh, Zcash looks like it's getting ready to move so briefly let me just go over I have been in the process of migrating my Google Authenticator because I have a tablet that's failing and it has to do with the power and just uh, it's an old tablet and I have all of my Google authentication, two-factor authentication on that tablet, which is about, oh, I think it's about 10 or 15 accounts. I've had to purge a few because they've gone out of business, I think, uh, like CoinZ or some of these other ones I just uh, deleted. But I had all of my two-factor from Poloniex, Bittrex, um, uh, Yobit, Cryptopia, um, all of those, Bitfinex, I had two-factor authentication enabled on that tablet, and uh, it's failing. So I spent a significant amount of time recently migrating to a new tablet. Uh, basically, just downloaded the Google Authenticator, logged into the account, disabled two-factor authentication, re-enabled two-factor authentication, took that little picture of the QR code, put in the the generated number, and then it change it over to that tablet so if you do have two-factor authentication with Google Authenticator uh, make sure that you have uh, well you want to make a backup I went ahead and make it made a backup of the physical keys it'll give you the physical key as well when you set up the two-factor authentication made a copy of the physical key and then uh, re-entered the new QR code make sure that you know if you have a device that's starting to fail you get migrated over to a new device because if your device fails that has your two-factor authentication on it then you're going to go through a lot of trouble trying to get back into your accounts um, I was looking at it because I thought I could uh, I had to crack the thing open to get it working and I thought I was gonna have to go through that process with th these exchanges and it it wasn't a pretty thing it, it's different on each exchange you have to contact the support team you have to authenticate yourself in many many ways it would have taken many weeks to get all my accounts back so again make sure if you have a device that's faulty in any way uh, get a copy of your physical keys and migrate over to a new device so that you don't lose your two-factor authentication get locked out of your accounts so I wanted to go over what I'm looking at here I, I do have some coins I'm going to send over back to Poloniex now I did want to mention the exchanges because I had warned many people that I thought Poloniex was going to fail, and it it didn't fail. It uh, it slowed down significantly, and there was a tremendous migration off of it. But you can see here now, it's almost at number one again. It's almost 200 million in volume. 
It's tied with Bitfinex. It's behind BitThumb. Uh, CoinCheck is a new one, but it's only got one. And then Bittrex is coming in here with about half. So Bittrex was the main beneficiary of the uncertainty of Poloniex. But like I've said before, I really don't like the interface. Now, I do have some accounts over at Yobit and uh, that you can see they have a huge number of alts at 327. Uh, I also like Cryptopia. They have 244 coins. They don't do a lot of volume, so it's hard to trade there. And a new one that I'm watching is Nova Exchange. That's because they've listed my spots coin that I'm still playing with. And uh, they're tiny at a half a million, but they do have 215 uh, coins on their exchange. So those are the main alt exchanges that I'm looking at. I'm uh, probably going to send some more Bitcoin back over to Poloniex, start trading again, because I really haven't done any day trading for quite some time. So the coins I'm going to keep an eye on here right now, I'm definitely keeping an eye on Florin coin. I think that it it's getting ready to possibly make a move and recover. Of course, I still believe in the idea. I haven't checked up on what the news is. Another coin I'm keeping a real close eye on is Clams because Clams got absolutely decimated, just destroyed. Uh, again, I didn't have a chance to see what the news was, but you can see just from this recent move in October, we went from 24 down to 6. So that's a 75% bear market in one week. And that's not looking at the long-term view. You can see that if we come from this price here, we're talking about a 90, 90 plus percent, I don't even know, maybe 98% bear market. So potential to make some money on that coin if uh, the fundamentals are there. Again, I haven't investigated flooring coin and then I'm, I'm keeping my eye on Stellar. Remember, again, you wanna see significant volume. Um, you don't really want to play in a coin that doesn't have significant volume. Stellar, I'm keeping a really close eye on Stellar because it came in with incredible volume. You can see it's right there behind Ripple right now. And it is correcting back from a massive move that it made. Normally these corrections from breakouts, they correct back anywhere from uh, 50% to 80 or even 90% and then they take off again. So you can see the massive move on massive vol volume that we had in Stellar uh, coming in right here. We seem to be correcting back right there to a support point. So we may be looking at a buy point. Again, Stellar has a long, long ways to go. You can see four, went all the way down to 324. That's 324 Satoshis. Remember Satoshi is the smallest Bitcoin unit out eight decimal points. The lowest price you can get is one Satoshi. You can't go any lower. Uh, 324 Satoshis was the low. We're hanging in there right now at about 558 Satoshis. But you can see on the long-term chart, uh, the price high. Let's get this spike here. The high was uh, 1,500. Looks like 1,500 Satoshis. But no, it looks higher than that. There must be something wrong with this. Uh, high 2598. It looks like it got around, we'll just say 3500. So, you know, a good uh, nearly 90% bear market in that coin. Those are going to be the coins that I'm watching when I get my coins back in to Poloniex uh, ready to trade. And I'm going to try to do a lot of updates to get caught up here on everything I've missed, including the pension crisis. Uh, maybe talk a little bit about these uh, crazy PSYOP false flag stories that are going on, how that impacts the news cycle. Maybe talk a little bit about Trump and uh, some of the other news coming out. But uh, hopefully I can get a lot of updates here. I'm going to be here in this residence inn. We're trying to get a new house. Going to be here till the first of the month. Hopefully we can get into an, a new house by the first of the month. Uh, please pray for us because this has been a very difficult process. But hopefully I can get a lot of updates and we'll talk to you next time.